follow the same uh, shape, designation, and colors here are um, f blue for female choice, red for competition, and purple for both, and gray for none. So things that didn't show up in our model selection. So this is also immediately interesting because females are using a different set of traits for choosing mates compared to the traits that males are using to compete against each other, with um, the exception of these three traits down here. And so we can zoom in on this by removing the traits that weren't important. So just focusing on the traits that were important for female choice and this network's gonna be rearranged because um, it's based on a spring algorithm which maxim uh, maximizes space usage and minimizes crossing between connections between nodes. Um, and so here it's even more clear that this network is um, fully connected. There's no loose nodes. Um, and this is most similar to what was expected by robust overdesign, or this combination of uh, redundancy and non-redundancy. And so this suggests that the traits that females use in mate choice um, should e efficiently encode uh, information that is uh, both non-redundant, so you have multiple information in different aspects over here, over here, and over here, but there, um, there, there is some robustness if you can't see part of the network. So in contrast, the traits that were important for competition um, showed four clear nodes. And um, we have um, non-redundancy, so these, these nodes are not linked. Um, and this is most similar to this pattern here, with redundancy within modalities at a cost to robustness across the modalities. And to focus in on the few commonalities here, uh, we have this triad of performance traits. So what this is is the speed. So this is um, rattle tempo, rattle length, and uh, syllable tempo. So we have the speed at which these syllables are produced, which could reflect something about a male's performance capabilities, and also the speed and length of the rattle, the temp, the trill. So it's really hard to do really fast. Uh, <laughs> And so both males and females could use that information to understand something about a, a competitor or a potential mate's uh, overall motivation or quality within about 0.3 seconds. So the take homes from this are the males and females use different signals um, to mediate competition and mate choice, and that trail rate is a primary exception, which could suggest something about performance traits in general that they may be important in intersexual and intersexual selection. Phenotype networks also represent a useful approach for visualizing and interpreting complex phenotypic data. And robust overdesign offers a baseline for identifying constraints because if you have divergence from this expectation of uh, redundancy and non-redundancy, then that could highlight something about um, the, the system. So future directions for this are, I'd like to add some quantitative measures. So here we're just qualitatively looking at the shape uh, of different phenotypic networks. So I'll be working uh, in my postdoc with Drs. Dai, Shizuka, and Eileen Hevitz to bring these uh, approaches to understanding wolf spider signaling evolution. And I'm interested in applying this to other taxes, so if you think you have a relevant data set, please come talk to me later. I'd be super interested to talk about that. Um, so I'd like to thank a lot of funding agencies, uh, my graduate committee, and a tremendous number of field assistants who helped collect all of this data. And with that, I'll take some questions.